the word of God is alive and powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of the soul and the spirit and the joints and the marrow. And it is a critic of thoughts and intents of the heart. All scripture is God-breathed and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God might be mature, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed. Rightly dividing the word of truth, or accurately handling the word of truth. Dear brethren, the simple basic fundamentals which talk about the truth in Christ, which teach to us the reality of the word of our salvation. And it is very much essential that as a believer in the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ in this unique dispensation of the church age, or heavenly citizenship, or heavenly calling, or heavenly tabernacle, it is must that you should note why you have been called as such. At the moment of salvation by faith alone in Christ alone, let God the Holy Spirit does several things which you cannot know until and unless it has been thoroughly explained for you. Therefore, dear brethren, by faith alone in Christ alone, by the baptism of let God the Holy Spirit, you have been entering into truth true eternal relationship which could be come out as a top circle. So this true eternal relationship in union with light as per Ephesians 5.8 in union with Christ forever 2 Corinthians 5.17 and your eternal relationship being secured Romans 8.38-39 followed by eternal security of John 10.26 not only this, in your eternal security, you have been sharing our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, number one, righteousness, 2 Corinthians 5.21. You are sharing his eternal life, 1 John 5.11-12. You are sharing his sonship, John 1.12, followed by Galatians 3.26. You are sharing his heirship, Romans 8.16-17, followed by 1 Peter 1.4. You are sharing his royalty, Colossians 1.13, 2 Timothy 2.11-12. You are sharing his priesthood, 1 Peter 2.5-9. You are sharing his election, Ephesians 1. 1, 4. You are sharing his destiny, Ephesians 1, 5, and you are sharing his sanctification in 1 Corinthians 1, 2, over 30th verse, followed by Ephesians 1, 4. And this is permanent for you, and this is absolutely eternal relationship for you. And this cannot be taken back. And since you believe in the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, by faith alone in Christ alone, righteousness has been credited to your account. Eternal life has been given for you. You take the sonship of Christ. You take the heirship of our Lord. You take his royalty. You work upon in his priesthood. You have been elected, you have been predestined, and you have been sanctified so that you can become a true ambassador for Lord in a day-by-day -day process of experiential sanctification. And that is what you and I have to note. The believer shares our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ about 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, including 10 things for him. And this is what the eternal relationship is. We are in union with light, Ephesians 5, 8. We are in union with Christ forever. In 2 Corinthians 5, 17, we are sharing eternal relationship with Romans 8, 38 and 39. We are sharing eternal security, John 10, 28. No one can pluck them from my hand, saith our Lord, and he prayed for us. And this believer shares rights, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, righteousness, eternal life, sonship, heirship, royalty, priesthood, election, destiny, and sanctification. It is no way that he can lose his salvation, dear brother. But after salvation, the house which has to be built at has been founded upon our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And upon that house, how we are going to construct, that is what it is left to you. If you are able to construct it with gold, silver, and precious stones, then it is a reward for you. Therefore, dear brethren, when we know that we are having a permanent relationship in the top circle, at the same time, we are going through in a temporal fellowship in this bottom circle. Eternal relationship is permanent, but temporal fellowship, that is what we can use the term, temporary fellowship, because, and every believer has been called to walk in the light under the filling ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, by the term of spirituality. But what happens? Because of our personal sin, we again go back into carnality, and we walk in the darkness as per 1 John 1, 6, and that carnality has been recorded for us in 1 Corinthians 3, 1, 2, 3. And the only solution is rebound. 1 John 1, 9. And if it is not rebound, you cannot get back into the temporal fellowship and you can yield unto the fruit of Christ, which is nothing but to go for maximum glorification unto our Lord. And if this rebound is not been done thoroughly or it is not been examined thoroughly as per 1 Corinthians 11, 30 and 31, many are weak, sick, and many are fallen into sleep purely because they have not taken 
taken the responsibility to go back unto the Lord with the pure hands. That's what even Malachi 3.3 3 tells to us. The priests whom I have chosen, I am going to cleanse them out like the dross which has been taken out of the silver so that they have an oblation in righteousness to serve me. That is what it has to be. Far less when we can stand in the pulpit and have a right and true pure heart to serve that great Lord, how we can think being the believers can have in fellowship without confession of our sins. Therefore, the priest who has been or the pastor teacher who has been there, he has to emphasize for the congregation wherever he is, number one to use, rebound, because we are into the temporal fellowship on this earth. And this believer's phase two in life demands for us that we need to reach maximum glorification for Christ. And that maximum glorification for Christ has been required for us as we walk through this unique spiritual life with the three stages of adult spiritual one, followed by spiritual self-esteem when you reach your personal sense of destiny, followed by your spiritual autonomy, and then by your getting back into the spiritual maturity. And this day-by-day -day process is what the daily renovation of our thinking is. And if you're not capable of understanding the simple truth, you will never capable, you will be never be in a capable of position to stand as such how we are going to construct that house upon that foundation laid down by our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. That's why, dear brethren, if you're constructing your house with wood, air, stubble, that is what meant to say, without the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, being out of the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, then you yield 0, 0, 0, 0, because in the fire it will be burnt off. But when you construct it with the mental ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, by using rebound and the number one priority to get out of your carnality because we do sin and Galatians 5, 19 through 21 explains to us because as a believer we have a royal priesthood, we can get back into the temporal fellowship. And this temporal fellowship has been purely the divine dynosphere wherewith our power source will come, wherewith we are going to apply doctrine, wherewith you are going to learn doctrine first, then apply, and then make a means to walk in our life. And that is what it has been rejected today in our pulpits because the man doesn't want to know that he has been given a divine dynosphere, the great mansion of all time. It is not the liberty wherewith the world can give you, the liberty of spiritual realm when our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ speaks to us. This great liberty of spirituality. And if you don't use rebound, you are going to lose out your liberty. You are going to use out with the points of considering that you have lost to use the liberty. And that is what is happening today. A believer doesn't know what is in Christ. He doesn't know what is the eternal relationship in Christ. He doesn't know that he has been permanently in union with Christ forever, Second Corinthians 5.17. And his eternal security has been given, John 10, 28. And he's been given, Romans 8, 38 through 39. None can separate you from the love of Christ. And since you have been in union with light, as per Ephesians 5, 8, you are sharing our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, righteousness, number one, Second Corinthians 5, 21. You are sharing his eternal life, 1 John 5, 11 and 12. You are sharing his sonship, John 1, 12. You are sharing his hairship, Romans 8, 16 through 17, followed by 1 Peter 1, 4. And in sonship, it is Galatians 3, 26. And in royalty, you are sharing his royalty with Colossians 1, 13. 2 Timothy 2, 11 and 12. You are sharing his royal priesthood, 1 Peter 2, 5 and 9, and Revelation 1, 6. And you are sharing his election, Ephesians 1, 4. You are sharing his destiny, Ephesians 1, 5. And you have been sanctified and kept apart positionally so that you are been superior in the polity of privileges to be noted. Positionally, you have been made superior. And experientially, you need to go along. You have been made such kind of an extension of superiority, whether you believe it or not, dear brethren, even the chief fallen angel is nothing that much superior place Lord has given to you. And the basis is for the angelic conflict to test the essence of character of Christ, wherewith Satan thought that this could be a right base for us to fight against Lord. Now, upon according to that same defender of divine essence of holiness, every believer has been formed on this earth to really tell, yes, my Lord's righteousness is great and his holiness is forever and forever. And we are here to defend that character of Christ. We are here to tell, yes, Lord is right. And we are here to prove by having mastery over the old in nature, the reality of the world. And this is what it is happening today in our churches. Why we are not able to understand what are you in Christ? That's why you have always the identity theft. Your theft of identity. What are you in our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ? It is not because that we are proclaiming to you again and again each and every day. It is because the burden that has been laid down upon our shoulders, we need to tell to you what we know. The very arrogance which ignited the devil's revolt defines his policy of human good and seeks to separate God's love from the function of his righteousness and justice. In this desperate attempt to discredit the creditors or the creator's infallible nature lies the basis for the angelic conflict. To discredit the creator's infallible nature, that is what defending the divine holiness of God. That is what the true base of angelic conflict came into essence, challenging the character of Christ. 
challenging that Lord cannot, that Lord can easily compromise his righteousness and let go Satan in his pride. No. And we need to note every time, dear brethren, what are we in the Lord? And why are we in the Lord? And how are we in the Lord? Because of his grace, you have been saved through faith. What a simple word Ephesians 3, 8 and 9 teaches to us. And what a great truth that you and I have to note in a day-by-day -day walk that we go through. Because of his grace, we have been saved. And this grace alone is enough for us. That we share in the permanent circle of the top one, of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, righteousness, his eternal life, his sonship, his heirship, his royalty, his destiny, his election, and his sanctification, his priesthood. And we are still ignoring our identity to know what are we in Christ. That's why many people have not known what is the true purpose to reach for Hebrews 5.14. What is the true purpose in attaining the true glory of Jehovah? What is the true purpose in reaching that reality? Dear brethren, ponder over these things as we shall continue in the next day. Father, we are grateful for the privilege that was given to fellowship with you through thy word. We thank thee for the permanent relationship that thou hast given. And the temporal fellowship as we go through in the bottom circle, help us to understand, to use number one priority, rebound and get back into the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, when Lord God, the Holy Spirit controls us to lead and walk as per thy design that have designed for us to reach for maximum glorification as you are eternally predestined for us in eternity past. Because with those who foreknew, whom you have, whom you have foreknew, them you have predestined, and whom you have predestined, you have chosen, you have called, you have justified, and you have glorified. Help us to do thy will accurately to thy praise. For we ask it in Christ's name, sovereign. Lord. Amen.